Today I'm going to do a quick uh, review over my uh, Mosaic Sin. Um, I shouldn't have called it Heidi's, but it's uh, I call it the Walk-In Sin is the uh, typical name we use for it. As uh, you can see, she looks exactly like Christopher Walken, same hairdo, everything. Um, and I just wanted to go over, I know there's a ton of already existing uh, Mosaic Sin sort of tutorials and stuff out there, but there's still a lot of like clarification uh, over like what's best and why you want to use certain stuff or why you don't want to use certain things. So I'm just going to go through all of that right now and like how I have my character set up and why. So uh, the main things I'm going to be reviewing here, uh, because there is a bunch of different preferences as how to play Mosaic. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. You can play it at different breakpoints. You can play it with different gear setups. You can play it with, uh, you know, leaning into lightning or cold, leaning one way or the other. Um, I think people even play it with uh, fire. But the two things I want to talk about in my video here are... Uh, this is from somebody who pushed 99 and I like to push 99 as fast as possible. I don't like to fuck around a lot. Um, so things that I have an interest in are being able to seal pop and kill Neolithac in a bail game that's full and still make it to the last two waves of bail. And uh, with that being sort of the threshold of success, um, there's only really one way to do it. So uh, this is the setup I used to hit 99. I didn't die uh, at all after 88, actually. Um, stupidly easy, but I'm just going to go through it. So the two uh, main facets of PBM, as you can see here, are uh, essentially kill speed and mobility, right? So kill speed is like how long it takes you to clear out whatever's on screen, and mobility is how long it takes you to get to the next screen full of or the next target, or the next boss, or the next seal, any of that. And... Um, Unlike with most characters, uh, mobility is actually extremely important on the mosaics, and specifically because uh, your charges fall off after 15 seconds. So um, you need to be able to teleport from pack to pack quickly, or you're going to lose charges. And losing charges means more time building up charges. And uh, that's also your most vulnerable state, is uh, when you don't have any charges. Once you have charges up, you're invincible. You're a walking tank, you can't be killed. So uh, again, with that in mind, I like to push for more mobility, and I'm going to go over that right now. Why? Uh, thing that I hate most in life is math, so it really pained me to can make this. But this is essentially the graph you need to consider. Uh, it really applies to any character, not just the mosaic sin. And um, on the left hand side, we have kill speed, right? So, like, you can build a character that kills really slowly, or you can build a character that kills really fast. But usually what happens with kill speed is the trade-off is mobility, right? So as you become more mobile, as you start putting FCR rings on and FCR amulets and gear based around FCR and movement, you're losing gear that has negative enemy resist or skills or things that are giving you damage. The point I'm trying to make here is that there is a sweet spot between kill speed and mobility. With very little gear, the Mosaic Sin, very little gear and very little plus to skills, any of that, the Mosaic Skin can kill everything extremely fast. So at a certain point, adding more skills and adding more, stacking more kill speed doesn't matter at all because it's redundant. If you're one-shotting everything on screen, why does it matter what your listed damage is at all, right? Or if you're just pushing listed damage, you're, I don't know, you have problems having getting it up with your wife or something all you care about is the numbies whatever go for it but if you actually want to play a character character that's like perfectly balanced you are going to need mobility that means sacrificing kill speed but it doesn't matter because you're still one-shotting everything so uh yeah again this red line basically shows you know as you become more mobile down here you lose kill speed now uh these two blue lines represent essentially the two major thresholds for p1 uh, you need very little kill speed because for P1 stuff basically falls over when you walk through it with almost any character Even barbs and uh, whirlwind barbs and like boazons, right? But P8 becomes a little bit harder for most characters This P8 line is way up here. You actually if you want to clear anything You're gonna have to massively sacrifice mobility. That is not the case at all for mosaic sin You do so much stupid damage with such little gear and I'm talking very little gear all you need is a fuck two mouths and two goals that's it you don't even need special claws you don't even need i mean griffs yes but 
you're one-shotting everything. So you can go full mobility and still one-shot nearly everything. And that is our sweet spot right here. And that is what I'm focusing on today because a lot of people run the 65 FCR build. They like having an SOJ on. They like having more to skills. And I'm literally telling you right now, you don't need that. You really don't need that. Mobility is key. The faster you move around, the faster you get to kill stuff, guys. It's not just about being able to like kill as fast as possible on screen. So I know I've made this utterly redundant, but um, here we go. We're focusing on the 102 FCR uh, mosaic sin, and I'm going to hop into gear right now. So uh, for gear, when you're hitting 102 on a trap sin or any sort of sin, and you're using claws, your gear is actually very locked in because there's only one way to do it. You have to have griffs on. So you get 20 FCR from Trangs, you get 20 FCR from Arachnid, you get as much as you want from your amulet you need to have 17 to 20 at the minimum because uh seven plus five from the griffs equals two and you're gonna hit that 102 break points trust me it'll add up here so you got 20 40 50 from one ring 60 from the second ring now you're up to uh what 77 here from the uh amulet and then last is the griffs which is a flat 25 faster cast rate you cannot hit 102 with anything else there's no other way to hit 102 using claws. It is Griffs, it is Trangs, it's a Rax, it's two FCR rings and an FCR amulet. That's it. So you're like, oh, but Heidi, you're missing all these skills, yada, yada, so on and so forth. Doesn't matter, guys. Then you have your two mosaics. It doesn't matter what you put them in, guys. It really doesn't. It just doesn't matter. You put them in the lightest base you can possibly find. Scissor Sawaya was a mistake. I had to put extra points in the decks. I hated doing it. But uh, the physical damage on your Mosaic Talon doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter. And here's why. Because you're going to be kicking. And guess what? You don't kick with the claw strapped to your boot. You kick with your boots. So your boots is actually the physical damage that matters towards lifesteal and anything else. Not your Mosaics at all. So put them in light bases. Easy to use. I have uh, three Blades of Ice and one Claws of Thunder base here. That's nice. Again, it's just icing on the cake. Without those, with just literally blank Claws with Mosaics, you will still one-shot everything in a P8 game. It won't matter. I don't even have good lifers. I have 11 to life. Okay, some 30s. I do have a nice torch and some PvP stuff at this point and, you know, typical stuff. But I'm even lazy. I don't use the cube or anything like that. The next we have... Uh, Stat point allocations. This is simple stuff, guys. You want to be able to put on your Enigma, and then you actually have to cover the difference between whatever number your Enigma gets you to and what the 167 it get, takes to wear Shadow Dancers. Shadow Dancers shouldn't need ex any explanation as to why we're using them. They're amazing boot for Sins. Uh, so yeah, Strength is just enough to be able to put your Shadow Dancers on after Enigma. Dex is just a, enough to put on your stupid... Scissor Sawaya mosaic that you made because you didn't realize that physical damage on your claw doesn't matter at all. And then the rest in vitality because you don't need anything else. The single most important piece of this build in terms of damage besides the Griffin's Eye is the Infinity. This character is doing lightning, fire, and cold. You are getting triple the value of an infinity that any sork gets that any other player in the game gets because it affects all of your elements and you are doing every element except poison if that's an element this is your most important piece of gear right here so um yeah and in the lastly skills this is something that there is a lot of confusion on and people are doing wonky things with you're using dragon talon and you want it only one point. You don't want any more points because the attack rating and the kick damage that you see listed here applies only to your single target. And again, your single target doesn't matter at all. You're doing so much AoE damage that pumping this single target damage is asinine, guys. Plus, you only want one point because you want as less kicks as possible. The more kicks you do, the more points you have a drag talent, the more kicks, the longer your leg is in the air, the less time you have to teleport from pack to pack. You want this to be as short as possible. You want to be in, pop them in, pop them in, pop them like that. Easy. One point in Dragon Talon. One point in Tiger Strike. Same as Dragon Talon. All of these bonuses only apply to your physical single target kick damage, which 
doesn't matter at all you're doing so much aoe elemental even to bosses this does not matter what you're getting for value here by dumping another 19 points in is so bad it's just not worth it it's really not so one point in tiger strike one point in cobra strike you're maxing phoenix strike you're maxing blades of ice you're maxing claws of thunder because these are your bread and butter these are all your aoe all that flying that's gonna be blinding giving you an epileptic seizure any second which you're about to see then the other tricky part that people miss is Fists of Fire. It has a weird interaction. Once you get past level 30, the amount of physical damage that it converts to fire gets to be so high that you're no longer doing physical damage. You're doing only fire through it. That means that you're no longer life stealing or mana stealing off the physical damage. You want to leave this at about 29. It's It starts going steeply down after 30. I left mine at 29 so once it's BO'd it's level 30 with level 29 fist of fire in one point in cobra strike you will go from empty to zero after full after just kicking once on a single pack which again leaves you no reason to be buffing your physical damage through dragon talon or tiger strike or buffing your leech through cobra if you're already getting what you need to off of one hit anything else is redundant this is the same with what I was talking about earlier with getting a ton of plus skills, you don't need that damage. I'm in a player eight game. I'm about to show you sauce everything immediately. Who cares? Zero in traps. I, this must have been on one of my claws. Next, we have shadow disciplines. I'm going to return to this in a second. You need claw mastery to get down to fade. I went full fade. Full fade gives you 32 physical damage received reduced. That's 32% DR. Pair that with the 8% from Enigma. You have 40% DR. That's 40% chance to take half damage from an attack. You also have 69 resist all. Love that number. Great for me. Um, that means uh, you're basically with maxing fade. You take care of all your resist needs and all your DR needs in one spell. I put one point in weapon block, 53% was enough for me, but uh, you actually, it's, you know, you can chuck like three or four in here if you want to get up to 57, 58, then you see strong and diminishing returns. Um, I don't know why there's a point in Shadow Warrior for me at all. Uh, you want one point in Mind Blast simply if you're doing Chaos, because again, this is the sin I built to be able to go around and get to 99 by kicking in solo T-zones and kicking shit out of seal popping Diablo and Neil attack before a group of pubs is able to get to wave 4 and 5 and bail. That is your goal. It is maximum speed. It is maximum, like, traversal. That's what you're interested in. Mind Blast 1 point. You'll see why in Chaos in a second. And then... Once you're level 99 like myself, you're going to have a few points left over, right? Because you got 20 here, 40, 60, you know, 9 from here, so you're at 69. Again, 89 with max fade, and then a couple others, prereqs, probably puts you at about well, level level 85. You can pretty much have all of these spells if you've done your skill quest. What I dumped my points into last is something that I think a lot of people will be like, what? Waste is Claw Mastery. And Claw Mastery doesn't apply to your kick. It doesn't apply to anything I'm doing. 99% of the time I'm playing my mosaics in this doesn't fucking matter at all. The Claw Mastery only matters for one thing, and that is your charge up spells. Because you're going to be whacking around with these claws. And notice, since we're wearing FCR rings and not Ravenfrost, we have garbage attack rating. Garbage attack rating, really low attack rating. Which means if you miss an attack, you're not building a charge. Which means you have to sit there twice as long to build up your charges because you're missing all your attacks. Claw Mastery, if I took these points out, I'd drop down to like 3.5k attack rating. I would never be able to get charges. Over 6k is enough, you'll see here in a second. But uh, after that, guys, if you have 102 FCR, you should only enter a game and ever have to build your charges once. Only one time. If you're doing it any other way, you're doing it wrong. Only one time because you teleport really fast. You can get to the packs really fast. You never lose charges. That's it. So you only have to deal that. And that's still 12 points I invested just to be able to do that one time to get those uh, attacks guaranteed. But it's it matters. It really does. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just show you how it plays, though. So you're probably going to be blinded here. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to BO. And then you're going to realize all your PvP binds are wrong. 
I cast Burst to Speed because I'm already level 99, but uh, the first thing I do is I walk out in Chaos. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, I think I missed one. Anyway, I have all my charges now. And now that I have all of them, look at how fast I TP. Yada, yada, yada. Most people are like, by now they've already stopped to like kick something else. You only have to kick to keep your charges up. But again, that is why you're playing around this 15 second gimmick, right? This is all. You, you one shot everything else. This is an eight player game. Grand Vizier's down instantly, right? You are better than a Hammerden. You're more efficient. You teleport faster than a Zahn. So there's that. Literally, I enjoy this more than my Java because you teleport so fast that you got a great break point on. Look at this fat chaos anyway. Sorry, I'm getting hung up here. But uh, you teleport faster than a Zahn. They have the FCR break points. And then last, you shred bosses. Here's your Mind Blast, guys. This is the only reason you Mind Blast. I don't know why I didn't have it bound here. Uh, and I'm taking so long to find it. Here we go. You're mind blasting this last wave, then you're name locking Infector and you're kicking him. And the reason you're mind blasting these guys is so that right now, in this 15, or it's actually 16 seconds it takes Diablo to spawn, you're able to kick them again. And then we're on to Diablo. And I still have my charges. I'm gonna open a TP, because I don't have it bound either. And Diablo dies so fast, like, why would you ever invest anything into Tiger Strike? You kill the boss that you're trying to kill almost immediately. And look, I can teleport to Spider Forest. It's nice. Like, I still have my charges. I just killed Diablo. I talked for 10 seconds, but I still teleport so fast, they didn't drop down. When your charges are gone, you are vulnerable. You don't lifesteal up. Like... You have to keep your charges up. That means being mobile, being able to reach pack after pack. I have nice 10 FCR rings. You could literally play with just an FCR ring, a level three ring of the apprentice. All you need is the Griffs, the Enigma, and uh, you don't even need a skill or amulet. I could take this off and I'd still be one-shotting everything in a 99 or 96 T zone, whatever the highest is. Oh, this isn't the T zone because the jungle's wonky. Now I'm back. But yeah, guys, this is uh, my video on the Mosaic Sin. I feel like there's a lot of people who have questions. A lot of people tend to run um, Dragon Claw. Here, I'll go back to town for a second. A lot of people run Dragon Claw because they see massive numbers, right? So if I put all my points into Dragon Claw right now, and I put all my points into Tiger Strike, I'm going to see unreal numbers that are super inflated, but they're only applying to the single target kick, which... Again, doesn't really matter because your AoE is killing everything. So, like, who cares about the single target? The problem I have with Dragon Claw is it's based off of AR. And the AR on both your weapons because both of your weapons swing individually. So, they both register AR differently. So, you'd probably have to use 65 to run Dragon Claw. Yes, you'd probably one-shot Diablo. But again, Dragon Talon gives you four kicks. That means four opportunities to see a massive explosion of Chain Lightning and Nova and all this stuff just from one kick. The other beautiful part about kick, it doesn't use AR. So again, you see my struggles with AR, they don't matter once I get those charges up. And you saw I didn't miss a single creep while I was getting them up, so who cares, right? My biggest thing here that people are not understanding is that Anything above this blue line is redundant. You don't need this crazy kill ability. Yeah, if you want to see your numbers spike like crazy, go ahead, use a respec, dump into Tiger Strike, dump into Dragon Claw or Dragon Talon. You'll see some crazy numbers. You can go take your heart on and give it to the old waifu right away. But you don't need to... This is all redundant. This doesn't matter anymore. If you're one-shotting everything, you don't need to keep increasing your damage. What you need to keep increasing is your mobility, and that means getting from pack to pack. I've said it 50 times. That's what you're concerned with. I don't wear any Sunder. You don't need to wear any Sunder. If something's immune to fire and lightning, you're hitting it with cold and one-shotting it anyway. Who cares? And then lastly, here's the cliff. Uh, if you disagree with me, you can just... Uh, throw yourself off of it. I drew this. It took me like 10 seconds, but uh, yeah, this is the old Tiger Strike, man, and that's where he ends up. So uh, thank you for listening. That's it. I hit 99. I took two weeks off vacation. I still made top 100 assassins. 
This is an easy build. Don't overcomplicate it, guys. It does stupid damage. You don't need to do even stupider damage. You need to be able to move. That's my whole point. So that's it. Uh, now I'm just going to get into the rest of my stream. I've been ignoring chat like a bad streamer. So uh, thanks all. I'm going to undeafen myself.